My name is Barbie the Welder and today I am going to teach you how to MIG weld. Everything that you're seeing coming out of my shop right now, the majority of it is done with this. You've got your wire spool, and you've got the wires going into this line. Your line comes all the way up to your MIG gun. At the end of the MIG gun, you have, and you see the tip, you see the wire coming out of the tip, and it's real simple. You pull the trigger here, and it feeds the wire through. It feeds the gas through also. Um, your gas is hooked up to the back. We've got the gauges here. Uh, to get started, you are going to take a look. This is a cheat sheet. This is inside almost every single welder. It's going to tell you your thickness of material and your wire size. Now, your wire size is different. It's written on the spool. Uh, I'm running 030. Uh, it's going to matter. Your your um, you have wheels inside of here. You have to make sure that your wheels are matched for your wire size. Your tip of your welder is matched for your wire size. If those don't match, if you're running too large or too small tips for your wire size, it's going to gum you up. It's going to cause you a lot of problems. So make sure that all your stuff is matched. That cheat sheet gives you a starter. It is not you know just the same way this video. It's not the be all and all and do all. This will give you a start. My goal is to give you a quick education and to get you out into your shop and practicing. That's where you're going to get, you know, your, your best education is by practicing and by doing it yourself. I'll get you started, but you're going to have to take the information to go figure out some stuff for yourself out in your shop. So, safety is super important. Um, when you're welding, it gives off uh, harmful rays, like, uh, like being in the sun, except for it happens super fast. So in order to be safe while you're welding, you're going to use gloves. You want a nice, you know, for MIG welding, I use a heavier glove. Um, protect your hands from the heat and from the sparks and from the rays. Um, I love my welding caps. I love my hair. Um, MIG throws sparks. So you want to protect yourself. Make sure that you're covered in every way. I have this cool little hat, little welding cap from... Um, my girl Lulu over Doug's Welding Caps makes these. I got me a Wonder Woman one because she rocks. And I have this is a quick change helmet. You can see it's got sensors on it, uh, top and bottom. Uh, it's auto changing, so you can flip your helmet down. You can still see what's going on uh, with your workpiece, but as soon as you strike an arc, as soon as you pull that trigger and start welding, it's going to automatically um, shut down so that all you see is just the the, the weld puddle, it was going to protect your face and your neck from those harmful rays and protect your eye, especially your eyes. Like, it's like looking at the sun, uh, like you look at the sun and you just, like you close your eyes, you see the white spots. It's like that, but so much more intense, like you can lose your vision from not being protected. There's a ton of different types of helmets. Um, I love the auto darkening one. They have a manual one where you flip down and you can't see anything until you strike an arc. Like when you weld, the gas protects it. It gives it like this happy little bubble to um, be welded in. The cleaner material, the easier it is. If you've got crap and stuff on your material, it is just going to cause you porosity. It's like, it's contamination in your welds. It's not going to give you a solid weld like you're looking for. So, starting out, I'm going to put my helmet on here. I'm going to start out, we're going to do some tack welds. And what tack welds are is just small spots of weld that are uh, like, like the size of the head of um, like a thumbtack. That is just going to give you, like it will connect two pieces of material together. So you're going to start out by just practicing a couple of them. Sitting on right here. So you're going to take your welder. You're going to want to, like, uh, as you MIG weld, your wire is going to touch the material. Your... Uh, your tip of your welder, you can drag that on the material, you can hold it on the material. For the MIG, that, you know, it's, it's not going to bother you. Like when you're TIG welding, you're not allowed to touch the, the tungsten electrode. MIG is totally cool, totally fine, and you need that wire to make that contact. That's what makes that circuit, and that's what gets you your weld. So anywhere from quarter inch to half an inch is how far I hold the tip of the welder. And again, it's that... It's a small piece inside there. You're going to hold that tip about quarter to half inch away from your material. And 
two hands, you want to be comfortable. The more comfortable you are doing this, the easier it's going to be to control your weld, to control yourself, to have a steady and comfortable weld. So, here. So, you want to hold, you can either lay it on, on the material, like rest down material, about a 45 degree angle, or you can hold it straight up wherever you're comfortable, but you're going to want to just pull the trigger. Get yourself a very small puddle and then let go. And you're gonna do that a couple of times to give yourself a small tack weld and just to practice that controlling the trigger and controlling your, your weld. All right, so you hear that? It is like a super fast frying, woohoo, frying bacon sound. So there are three tack welds. And what you want to do is make sure that you've got a nice, it's going to give you like a, like a circle around it, like, um, real close, that uh, you can see that it's starting to melt into the material. If uh, you see that there's not any spatter on there, or if there is, there's not really any spatter on that. If your machine is set up right, you should have very minimum spatter with your mid welding. You will have some, it happens, but the better your machine is set up, like, I mean, like, you'll see it sparking and spattering, but the, the better your machine is set up, the less spatter you're going to have stuck to your workpiece. So what you need to do is you need to practice doing those, like, making sure that your machine is tuned right in. Honestly, if your machine is not tuned, it is going to be stinking miserable for you, just like anything else. Setting up your machine, you know, each different thickness of material, your machine's going to change. You're going to want to turn up your wire speed to speed or turn it down. Uh, just depending on what it is, but it's something that you really you fine tune that machine for the material you're on, your life is gonna be so much easier. So now, now you've got your, you know, you're gonna want to practice it, practice it a little bit. Well, like I said, the more you practice it, you're better gonna get. It's not, you know, you might not get it right away. Most people don't get it right away. You don't learn to walk immediately. It takes time. It takes process to do it. All right. So now that you've got your tacks worked out, there's a couple different ways to weld. You can run a straight bead just by taking your welder and pulling it. If you can see that with me, just taking it and pulling it, you know, slowly back with you. Or you can take it and you can weave it back and forth. So to show you straight, to just to slowly pull it back, or you can weave it back and forth. And it just depends on what your comfort zone is, where you're at with that. Start out by taking it, and we're just going to pull the trigger. We're going to stay about a half to a quarter inch away from the material. And you can actually, if it's easier for you, drag that cup, drag that cup or your, your tip, drag it right along the material. That's going to give you a consistent, uh, a consistent distance between the tip of your welder and your workpiece. And then that's the goal, is that consistency. If you pull it back farther, you're going to have less heat. If you get it closer, it's going to be more heat and it's going to change how your weld is. So your goal is that consistency in your speed, your travel speed, and your consistency in the distance between the tip and the workpiece. So we're just going to start and we're going to take it and we're just going to slowly, again, two hands, and I'm sliding my, my bottom hand along this. I'm just going to take it, I'm going to slide it slowly, and it's just, you want to watch that puddle. So as your, as your material is, as your wire is mounting into the material, it's going to create a puddle. Um, and you need to look for that. That's something that's very important. If you can't see that puddle, you're going to have a very hard time welding. So just, once again, practice. It takes time. Don't beat yourself up over it. You can totally do this. So you take, and you're going to look at that puddle, and as you see the puddle form, like you're going to make that little puddle like with the tap, but then you're going to start to slowly pull it. And as you pull it, you're going to watch that trail weld follow the tip of your welder. It's, it, it's incredible. And it's absolutely incredible that, uh, well, someone figured out this technology, but we can actually, like, master molten metal with this machine. So start off with... Get yourself going and all right. That is there you go. Smoking. But what you want to do is you want to practice it. I'm going to show you a couple more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my wire speed feed down. And I'm going to turn it up. I want you to see what happens if the wire speed feed is too low. Listen to the weld. Like in a lot of this, 
Now, it is visual, but it's also, you can hear it. So some people are better at hearing stuff than they are at seeing stuff. So maybe hearing how um, it's not enough wire speed, and you'll know what, uh, what change to make in your machine. All right, so you see how that wasn't coming out hardly at all, and it was burning back into the tip. Too slow wire speed. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. So you hear that sound and it's, it's popping, it just, it's trying, I think I can, I think I can, and it's not there yet. Turn the wire speed feed up a little bit more. You heard that? Alright, so that's where your machine should be set at. And it's hard to this. So your, your difference in what's happening, and just... That's your wire speed feed. And again, if it's not melting in the material, then you're going to want to turn up your heat. It comes down to just practicing, just taking your time and getting out in the shop, grabbing some scrap material, and making sure that you're putting the time in that the welding deserves. It's an art form before you do anything else with it. And you just need to take your time and figure it out. You know, once again, your machine set up, make sure that your, your wire thickness is the same as your reels and the same as your, your tip diameter. Make sure all that stuff is set. Uh, make sure that your gas is turned on and always help. You got a good ground on your table and just get out there and practice. You know, the more you do it, the better you're going to get. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Facebook and on social media if um, you want to check out some of the work that I do and keep up with my shenanigans. And check out my website, barbathewilder.com. Thank you guys so much for sticking in there. And I hope that you really have enjoyed this video and that you've gotten some uh, good tips out of it. And that you're able to take it and uh, take it and run with it. Have a great day.